Hey guys, what's up? Carter here. This is another video request that I got from a subscriber and figured it would uh, be a pretty decent video to make. Should be pretty quick. Um, I'm just going to run through how a button lock works. Somebody wanted to know and I figured I would try and show. Now, I debated whether it would be better to take it apart or show it together. I think it's better if I actually just leave it together. I think it might make more sense. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. If it, uh, if I feel like it doesn't really get the point across, maybe I'll take this apart and we can take a look inside. I hate taking this one apart though. It's kind of a little bit of a pain. Well, no, it's not too bad actually. I've pretty much got it. So yeah, maybe we'll take it apart. We'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, so button lock. Um, and the button lock I'm showing here, this is actually a non-auto. An auto would be slightly different, and I'll tell you why it would be different. Um, it's really just in one little factor. So here's your button right here. Basically, it's held captive from coming out this way, but there is a spring inside here that is pushing constantly this way. So this whole assembly is under tension to move outwards, which is why it takes pressure to press the button. Now here's where the focusing is going to come in handy. I'm going to use, whoa, I'm going to use this kind of as a pointer. Um, so right back here, there is the button assembly. It goes, connects to there, finally some focus. And here's the main drum area that's going to be doing most of our work in terms of making this function. So you can see if I press that button, see how that pushes in? Right there. Now it's actually in, in this position, in the closed position, it is inside an insert kind of a cutout area on this tang. But because this is a uh, not a full auto or not an automatic knife, it uh, is not completely locked in this position. It's the detent. So you can see as I open it, see how it kind of pushes that in? So this, the cutout that it's fitting into is kind of ramped. So it actually allows it to open. And that's what acts as a detent to keep your blade closed. Now if this was an actual auto, this would be a fully locked position. You wouldn't be able to open it like this. It would be completely locked, just like it's completely locked in this position. And you would actually have to press this button in in order to release it. And obviously in an auto, this blade is always under tension when it's closed and it's going to want to fling open. So the second you press this button and relieve that lock, it would go flying open. So that's how the detent works on a button lock. And uh, button locks are very smooth because there's not a lot of surface area. Once this blade starts to move, there's very little of this drum actually touching the tang. And so that means very little pressure is dragging this blade. So it really makes, makes for a nice smooth yet secure action on these button locks here. Now when you get to the fully open position, we're going to need to zoom in here or uh, focus hopefully. Take that out of the background. Oh, it's dirty under there. Yeah, that maybe helped. So you can see there's our drum right there, and it's kind of riding on top of the this portion of the blade, and that's what's keeping the button depressed. As soon as it reaches this point, see that little cutout right there? Then that allows this drum to come forward. Now, just like a liner lock or a frame lock, here's the point of contact right here. So the point of contact that this drum is making is right against this guy right here. Right there, you can kind of see, yeah, right there, you can see that wear line. And if you notice, just like a liner lock or frame lock, that's not a straight across cut. See how it's angled? 
So just like uh, same principle with the Walker liner lock, as it starts to wear in, the drum will simply move forward, 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 preventing play and things like that until it got so worn out that the drum was completely out. Um, and that's the equivalent of the liner or the frame lock moving all the way over to the other scale. So there it is engaged. Just goes right inside that little crevice there. And so any pressure put down on here is going to pivot on this area and come forward this way. And as you can see, I mean, that's a very secure lock. You're basically fighting this spring tension, you know, to make this fail, this would have to slide this way. And that's it. That's really the only way you're going to fail. I mean, actually destroying this mechanism um, you know, with the liner lock or frame lock, you have the possibility of it sliding out of place to its starting point and the lock being released. But you also have a possibility of the liner lock or the frame lock becoming deformed and actually moving or bending and sliding all the way over. You have much less chance here. I mean, the probability of breaking this drum mechanism, and as you can see, these are all steel inserts here. It's all riding on pure steel. And they can afford to use hardened steel because it's such a small, you know, the, the entire locking mechanism is uh, isolated just to here. So they can use high quality hardened steel. They don't have to worry about having to use titanium to bring down weight, but then, you know, having it wear quicker or skeletonizing, using thin liners, things like that, because weight, in terms of the locking mechanism, isn't really an issue with a button lock. And, you know, a, uh, an axis lock actually works very similar to this. The only difference um, than this on the axis lock, this is all pretty much the same, except this drum would go all the way across here. And instead of having a spring that's pushing this way, the spring would actually push this way and you would actually move the drum out of the way by doing this. But other than that, it's very, very similar. Uh, there is a few things though that I prefer for the button lock and that is, and you know, a lot of this is just me theorizing, not proven, but just wanted to say this. Um, as far as gunk goes, I just have a feeling this would be, you know, if there is a minor amount of debris in here, I just have a feeling this would actually push that debris out of the way and you would have a better chance of a successful lockup even if it was compromised with uh, gunk inside there. Whereas the access lock, because it's coming up as a solid piece and, and uh, pushing into it this way, I actually have a feeling it would scoop up more sludge and push it into that tang and you'd have a higher probability of that causing a lockup issue. Now as I said, I haven't tested that. I could. That sounds like fun. I might have to do that. Um, you know, and it's has to be taken with a grain of salt. It would take, you know, exact models uh, within the same specifications, and you'd have to do thousands of tests with gunk that's exactly the same and stuff. But still fun to do stuff like that on the fly just to see what happens. So that's how a button lock works. Uh, hopefully that was fairly clear. I don't think I'll need to take it apart. Um, you can pretty much see the mechanism inside. It's a very nice lock system that I don't think gets as much play as it should. Um, I'd like to see more makers utilize a button lock and a non-auto knife. Alright guys, take it easy.